Okay, this will be a two-parter here, and it's going to be involving uh, the process of going into Maya 2018 and rendering our goods in the new Arnold with the new shader. And currently, Algorithmic does not have an update on the network setup for this, so I'm going to show you how to get it done. And this will include everything from emissive to uh, opacity for glass, uh, uh, ref refraction, and so forth. Um, for, so first off, I want you to see what I exported out of Maya really quick. It's two pieces of geometry here. Uh, one has a specific material assigned to it here and the other here. It's very important that you, if you have something that's glass, it's best to isolate it via a separate uh, UDIM. Uh, so I have two different materials assigned here, and you can see the other piece is basically a solid uh, mesh here. So you can kind of think of this as... Uh, you know, like a piece of glass looking through a pane, and then here's like this encasing. So keep that in mind as we kind of go through this. So this was exported out as FBX. And here we are inside of Substance Painter, where I did a little bit of work, and you can see I have my shell and my glass. So here's my actual uh, shell. Shell has some emissive information in here that are like glow-in-the-dark information that I painted. And again, that's uh, pretty simple by just coming in here and adding a, uh, just hitting plus here and adding an emissive pass and painting some emissive materials. So you can see that's what that is. And then we have just this basic fabric uh, woodland. Uh, and there's a reason I chose this so we could actually see the refraction of these uh, very high contrasty details on the inside of our mesh. So uh, again, it's very important, and I'm going to show you a uh, reason here, that if you want to see refraction inside of Substance Painter, um, it's a good idea to have these two separated into two different uh, texture sets. In other words, when you bring them in through, via FBX, and again, the way I exported that out here was assign one material to this, doesn't matter what it is, a Blinn or a Lambert, assign this to another material, grab both of them, and then do File, Export Selection, and FBX Export. So kind of keep that in mind as we kind of go in here. So the glass itself uh, currently has no opacity uh, uh, channel whatsoever. So if we take a look at it, here's my glass, right? And you'll see that throughout this here, you know, I have base color, height, roughness, metallic, normal, right? There is no, there's no reality here of opacity. And there's a reason why I'm going to go ahead and show you that. So let's jump into iRay real quick. And I'm going to go to my rendering in iRay. I have a previous tutorial uh, that's for free that kind of explains uh, how to use all the iRay settings, so definitely check that out. If you come down here under the uh, 8MDL parameters under refraction, um, this is working off of the main shader, which is everything, basically. So you can see if I bring this, everything, uh, you know, it starts basically becoming more and more refractive. And that's everything. And now you can see we actually do see interactive refraction inside of Substance Painter. The uh, reality is, is you cannot have an opacity input in your texture set and see refraction. It doesn't work together. I'm going to demonstrate that in a minute here. But you can see my refraction, right? I can increase it all the way. I can change the index of refraction. Currently, it's set to glass. I do have a height map that's giving me a little bit of a noise pattern here, which is what I like. But if I set my index of refraction to 1, you can see that it's perfect transparent glass. Uh, in other words, I'm sorry, not transparent glass, but there is no refraction through the uh, double layers of the geometry as well as the refractive capabilities. So you can look up the index of refraction online for uh, things such as, like I said before, jade or milk. Um, everything has a different type of refraction. And again, it's the more you increase this, the more crazy things get. So I'll leave this at the 1.5 option here. And with that said, you can see that this is a good interactivity to do, but if I wanted to build up gunk on my glass and see it live inside of Substance Painter uh, 2017.2, that is not going to happen. I'm going to show you why in a minute here. So let's pop out. And I'm going to go ahead, and here I am under my glass texture set. I'm going to jump in here, and I'm going to go ahead and add an opacity channel. The minute you do this, the minute you add this, and you go back in, to your render eye ray, you're going to notice something interesting. Bam, it's gone. It doesn't work. Uh, you cannot do this. Uh, you cannot see refraction in Substance Painter. At least now, I know that they're working on an update. But you cannot see it. You can see, obviously, transparency and all this, but if you really want to see the refractions going on in here, then you, you, know, you can do it. 
But ultimately, that doesn't really matter to me because I can deal with refraction later when I bring this into Maya and render it via Arnold. So again, we're going to go over the Arnold setup in the next tutorial, but I just wanted to kind of make you aware of that whole layout. So let me just kind of pop back out here. And now that I have glass and now I have an opacity, I can come in here and add a uh, certain level here. So first off, I'm going to go and play around a little bit. I am going to uh, go back into my uh, eye ray real quick and let's go ahead and turn off refraction. So I'm going to go over here to, again, we're working under the instance name of the main shader. That's for every material or every texture set. So we're going to separate that out in a minute here just so we can kind of take care of that. So as of right now, it's not a good idea to have re uh, refraction on everything because it changes it. So you can see we're losing this detail here of the actual, uh, you know, camouflage as we do this because I, I just want this glass to be refractive, right? So the way you can pull that off is, uh, is you can come in here, I'm going to turn this off. First off, let me first get rid of that opacity layer. I kind of jumped ahead of myself there. And we are back to where we are. So then again, if I just take a look again and render it in, you will see if we bring the refraction up, we get that beautiful refraction for us to kind of, you know, enjoy. And if we are going to render out of Substance Painter via iRay for showing our work, uh, then it's the way to go. But you can't have your cake and eat it too. In other words, you can't have refraction and then go in here and start painting an opacity layer to have dirt in the corners like you would on a spaceship that would have kind of like build up grunt, you know, gunk in the uh, concave areas. So I'm going to go ahead and take the refraction and turn it down. And now I want to just basically uh, have refraction for just this material. So I'm going to pop out. And the way that works is um, I have to isolate this uh, specific glass to its own basic uh, material. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click here. And by the way, if you just take a look here, if you go under viewer settings, you know, we are currently looking at the main shader, right, which is a PBR metal rough. But I want to have my own for the glass by itself. So on the glass, I'm going to click here under the, the actual uh, texture set list, and I'm going to choose new shader instance. You can change the name of this, by the way. You notice it changes up here, instance name. And I'm going to go ahead and call this glass. Now you can see I have glass and the main shader. So you can choose in between. Others can actually inherit the uh, qualities of that specific shader. So now that this is currently the uh, one that I'm working on, I can now isolate it to that. And now I can go back in here under my uh, render eye ray here. And now if I come over here, again, I'm working under uh, just one specific material, not the universal material that affects everything. I can come over here and you can see it says instance name glass. I'm going to go over here to refraction. And now if I bring up refraction, I get refraction, but I don't affect the other things in here. So again, if you plan on rendering uh, just, f you know, for the sake of showing off your work inside of um, Substance Painter, realize that if you want refraction, this is about as far as you can go. Now, I was thinking of some really quasi-goofy idea of maybe exporting out two separate geometries on top of themselves and, uh, you know, basically making a duplicate of the glass twice and having a different material uh, in, in Maya assigned to that and then having an opacity base reality for that and then getting that layered on top of this. But it's a little bit overboard if you want to go that way. That's totally cool. But now let's talk about, uh, like I mentioned before, opacity. Again, the second you come in here to this glass and you go <clears throat> in here and actually set up on your texture set settings an opacity channel, which I'm going to do again. There you have added it, opacity. And then I'll go ahead and render it again. You'll see that the refraction breaks instantly. Okay, so keep that in mind as we go, uh, kind of go into this. Okay, so uh, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and take the refraction all the way down because I don't need it. Now we're going to just deal with opacity. And that'll be ba the basis of what we're going to do. So I'm going to come over here under glass. I'm going to go ahead and add a layer. So let's go ahead and add a base layer here, or fill layer, I should say. I'm going to put that at the bottom. And I'm basically just going to allow for the painting of opacity. And I'm just going to set that opacity to zero. There we go. So that's basically filling up. And this should work. I think I got it right. Let's see. Here we go. 
So now you can see we have the glass material set up. Again, if you come in here and uh, you can fiddle with the refraction, it's not going to do much. As you can see, it's like it's pretty much broke, right? So you you might as well leave it off in regards to this material here. But at this point, I could start fiddling around and getting my dirt information in. So how can I do that? Well, it's pretty simple, right? <clears throat> Uh, first off, this material is currently, even though it has an opacity input, this specific uh, piece needs to have a change, right? So again, we have a different setup here that's glass, right? And I'm going to come over here to the viewer settings and swap this out. Instead of PBR Metal Rough, we need to use PBR Alpha Blending. So PBR Metal Rough with Alpha Blending. There is another one over here that is alpha test and this is either on or off it's very uh, binary um, in other words it's it's uh, like sort of integer style in other words you either have opacity or you don't have opacity so this is something that you don't really want so just make sure you choose uh, PBR metal rough with alpha blending and there we go now we can see it properly displayed and again I can go back into my uh, eye ray here and you can see what we have and not very enjoyable looking there's no refraction in here and it doesn't matter what I do, I'm still not going to be able to see that refraction, which kind of is a bit annoying. So one of the ways that if I want to see such artifacts, like you've noticed up here, I have a crystal uh, set up for height information. And I saw it before as a sort of crystalline sort of no, uh, displacement. You notice if I go ahead and render this now, you don't see it at all. So what's that all about? Well, and for you just to be judging roughness and, uh, you know, uh, height painting, what I do is I take this bottom layer, which, of course, I call opacity, and I take the opacity, and I'll bring it up about 0.2, okay, for now. But when I come to the point of baking out my maps, I will want to take this all the way down to nothing. It will bake out my roughness and my height and my normal map information if I have any of it painted on the glass, but I want this back to black which is very important. So I'm going to put this to 0.2 for now. And now if I go ahead and just render this out, you will start to notice that crystalline uh, roughness there. Again, we have no refraction. We're not seeing the, uh, the emissive uh, little triangle over here start to bend nicely and refract with the actual look of this weird, weird crystalline kind of uh, height information. But it does give us a starting point to kind of start working. Okay, so again, if 0.2 is too much for you, you can bring it down. You can also output a color, too. So if you choose a color that's like black, right, and you take the opacity and you bring it up maybe like this, this might be a little bit more of an appeasing way to work. Um, so again, I could just take a look at it. Because imagine if you're actually making a spaceship or something like that. And you can use 50% gray as well. You want to actually see things without what this one might be considered a specular highlight or something. Because you're basically taking opacity on it. So again, it's, it's up to you. You can again take the color up to a 0.5 value. In the end, you're just going to take this opacity down to zero when you actually paint it. And why is that? Well, because if you go ahead and take a look, I'm going to go ahead and hit the letter uh, C and go through my different materials here you can see I have height information here's my roughness despite the opacity being uh, you know visibly not there the roughness will still be inherited uh, and then of course if I have metallic on there as well normal information on there as well you can see opacity is pr uh, currently you know at that specific level so if I take this back here to black I won't have that issue and what that does and when you bring it into Maya and render an Arnold if you do leave this on uh, your opacity map is up a little bit and you'll get a very bright glass. So it's important to keep that in mind as we get into the dielectric uh, setup of, of the way the glass reacts inside of Arnold, which is going to be in the next video. So before we finish up this video, I want to go ahead and put some dirt on this area here. So again, I'll go ahead and the letter M material to, to return. And I'm going to go ahead and add some rust. So I'm going to come over here to my uh, materials and grab a rust and drag it on the top of everything. And again, you can see the transparency is what it is. What I do want to paint in here for this rust here is actual opacity. Opacity. 
And I'm also going to turn down height, roughness, and metal, like that. Okay, so we're painting, uh, we got the color, we could do the height as well, sorry. And then the opacity here. And now I'm going to go ahead and come in here and add a uh, generator. So I'm going to go put in generator, or actually let's add a mask first. So I'll add a black mask. And then with the black mask selected, I will add a generator. With the generator selected, I will go ahead and choose MG Mask Editor. And with the MG Mask Editor, uh, I'm going to come down here to the uh, actual uh, curvature, increase that really high, and you can start to see the buildup of the dirt here. Display-wise, it gets kind of weird. Um, I can open up my options here for Global Contrast and in increase the contrast. Global Balance to increase the erosion. There we go. We're getting it around the edge. But as you can see, if I go ahead and render this in iRay, we're just getting a general banding. There's no texture breaking it up, right? It's just kind of there. So what I'm going to do in that case is come in here and start to play around a little bit. So again, I'm going to add probably a little bit more contrast in there and get more, more balance blur there. Now you'll see what's happening here, and this is something that you might want to adjust and go in and, you know, if you have your curvature map or if you're going to drive this based on your occlusion, which probably would be a better idea, but in this case I don't have an occlusion. These are really butted up against each other. Um, but you can see it's grabbing these edges here. So you can go in and paint your actual um, additional maps, right? or your helper maps is like I call them, and get any details painted out here individually. And again, to kind of go into that, you know, if I were to go over here to my texture set here, I actually go to display settings, let's go viewer settings here. So we're under mode material if I go to my additional maps, right? And I go to my curvature map, which is driving all this. You can kind of see, it's hard to see, but there is a, a white line here and right here. And that's going to be building up uh, some of the dirt itself. But if you can come in here, uh, you know, bring this in as a layer and paint out these areas to 50% gray so you don't get this artifact, which you're about to see. So I'm going to go ahead and hit M really quick. And again, you can see it happening here. It's like, I don't want this rust here on this line. So this is all being driven by my curvature map. Okay, so we're going to just deal with what we got. Okay, so here's our editor, and I'm going to add a texture to kind of break this up. So under my texture uniform color, I'm going to go ahead and choose black and white spots, three. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it all the way up with the opacity. And now it kind of gives it a nice sort of texture to it. Now at first, when you look at this, you might go, oh, this doesn't look right. Like, it feels as if this is uh, still transparent here, right? Well, if you go into your eye ray, you will find that, no, that's not the case. It actually is perfectly opaque. So I'm going to kind of poke around there. It's a little bit, looks like a little bit transparent right there. Let's see if we can kind of get up there. Yeah, we still got a little bit of an issue there. Yeah, we're still getting an issue, and I think it has to do with this generator. I am not super thrilled about this thing, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of it. And again, here we go. So I have my options here, and let's see here. So we got the fine rust. Let's take a look at the mappings here. So I am mapping opacity. Mm. You can kind of judge things, and I always like using the letter C, so we can kind of come in here, and here's my opacity channel, as you can see here, right? And if I go back to my opacity layer here, I can take the opacity down, so it's pretty much clear, as you can see. Um, then I can come over here to this rust here and start painting in this information. And right now it's currently at this kind of grayscale color, which is exposing the actual rust fine. So this rust itself, it's the, op the opacity, it's feeding the information, the color information is feeding into the opacity here. So what I think I'll do is I'm going to skip this rust, and again, we're just going to, I think I'm going to make just my own material here. So let's go ahead and make a fresh material. 
I'm not liking the rust. There we go. So there's the fill material, and let's just pretend this is rust for now. So I'll use a kind of a dark brown, right? There we go. And then for the opacity, um, I'm going to go ahead and leave that at, yeah, so it's going to be 100%. Okay, so then I could come in here. And again, a great way to diagnose this is just go into these di different layers here. And now I'll add a mask, add a black mask. And now I can come in here and paint. So I'll go to my alpha brushes here and choose like Dirt 2. And now you can see I can start painting the edges here. Now, again, it would have been better to use as a generator. But now I know for sure what's going on here. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a quick kind of grunge map around this. All right, so this would be one of those spaceships with the gunk or, you know, some window in uh, some bad horror film that, you know, or even f you could do stuff like frost or whatever, kind of building up around the edge. And again, I could go to the opposite side as well, so I could turn off my shell here and, you know, paint the opposite side, but I think I'm just going to leave it on the uh, inside here because obviously this is where weathering from the outside would actually get to it. So let's go ahead and go back to M to see what we got. And there we go. So now we're seeing the reality here. Uh, we are not, like I mentioned before, I'll go back to my opacity channel. When you have your opacity down to zero, you will not see the qualities of your, you know, uh, height map or roughness going on on here. So having a little bit of opacity, but in the end, turning this down, very, very important. Okay. So here you can see, let's see if we take this base color, bring it back down to black. There we go. Yeah. So it's, again, keep your base color down to black um, because it won't give you these artifacts along the edge. You can see if I have a color in here that's red, I'm getting a red outline color. So I'm just going to put this to black. So there's the base color. There's the opacity. This is just crystal that I have height and rough put on. So you can see I can turn that off and on. And then here is my fill layer for dirt. Okay. So that is pretty much it in kind of understanding opacity. Um, if I want to, I could add another layer on here. So I add a layer. And uh, let's go ahead and just put in, say, a quick uh, brush here. So I'm, I'll go back to my regular brushes and choose default hard or whatever and go back to my alphas and why don't we choose something like this interesting little thing I'll put that in my alpha there and I can come in here and again with this selected I'll choose a base color um, I'll actually add a little bit of height too let's choose an interesting color here maybe a green and roughness we'll keep it very rough and like that so if I click it Let's see, is it, uh, do I, yeah, I need opacity too, there we go. So I did paint something, believe it or not. So if you go to C, you'll see there it is, right? So it is there, except there's no opacity. So I'm going to undo that. I'll go back to my, there we go. So now I can paint this. Make sure you have opacity on full, 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 uh, full works. I'll turn uh, normals out. I don't need to deal with that, so. Med metallic, I could turn that off. I'll go ahead and make a couple of these like that. And if you look closely, they will have the inheritance of the uh, crystalline structure that I have. And that's because on this specific layer, we can jump over to our roughness. And it's set to normal, that's fine. But if I go to my height information, it's set to linear dodge. So it's just adding the data at the bottom. So I'm going to set this to normal and I should lose that kind of weirdness. So at this point, I'm gonna move on to the next lesson, which is how do you take all this juicy data, right? Everything from uh, normal map bumping to opacity and all that and get it into the new Arnold 2018 uh, setup, which is totally different than the old. So we'll go ahead and do that in a minute. VFX for Filmmakers proudly releases Scratch to Substance Volume 1. 
Whether you're an environment modeler creating assets for a game engine or a visual effects specialist looking to create pre-rendered photorealistic worlds, this package is for you. In this training video, we start with modeling in Maya via photographic perspective. After proper care is taken for UV layout, the models are brought into Substance Painter for materials and texturing, then exported to both Arnold and Maya and Unreal 4. Throughout this 10-hour course, we cover photographic modeling techniques, seamless UV strategies, building out a high-res mesh for baking, ID mask creation in Maya, map baking techniques in Substance Painter, fill layers versus layers, creating custom smart materials, generators, building Substance Designer templates, creating materials in Designer, stencils, decals, material stencil projections, grunge maps, procedurals, filters, dirt cracks, weathering, projection texturing, Unreal Engine level setup and diagnostics, scale setup in virtual reality, rebaking normal maps, and rendering in Arnold for Maya. VFXForFilmmakers.com, the next evolutionary step for storytellers.